Welcome back to Wednesday Night Fight Back. Now, there are 5.3 million people on out-of-work benefits in the UK. And in many of our post-industrial cities, there are large numbers of people on these benefits and simultaneously large numbers of job vacancies. So this poses a question, how did we get here? What, do, what are your thoughts, Michael, on this? Well, um, the short answer is, I mean, I, I, I don't know. Um, but I think there are several things, several observables that you can make. First of all, uh, you do have these huge NHS backlogs. Um, if people are waiting for, in a serious condition, for over a year for their, um, their operation or their procedure, then it's quite possible that they're not going to be working and therefore they're going to be on benefits. That's the mm. first thing. So I think, you know, the problem with the NHS is not only one of human misery and uh, it's, it's also one of, you know, there's a huge economic cost, I think, to having those, uh, those large mm. waiting lists. But the other thing I would say is it seems to be, I mean, I doubt there are many um, self-employed suffering from long COVID. Um, right. um, it, it, it does seem that uh, long COVID uh, in its disabling form, it seems to be concentrated uh, in the civil service rather than the private sector. And mm. uh, if you look within the civil service, it seems to be concentrated, um, at least should we put it this way, um, the defense industry, the defense sector seems to be much less affected by long COVID than, um, than say, environment or, or, you know, other ones. So I suspect there's a... It's always, it's always well, I, I, suspect, little, I suspect there's a reaction yeah. to a degree of bad and incompetent management, actually. Um, mm. And I don't think it's so much even swinging the lead. It's just depressing. If you've ever been in an organization which is badly managed, and I have, mm. uh, it's depressing. You know, it really is. Mm. And, if, and if you're depressed and you get a cold, you, you probably want to, you, you know, that's probably how you stay. I'll take, I'll take the, that point. But actually, the, the long-term uh, trend is on this, on this category is alarming. Uh, in the 80s, there were about a million people on uh, disability benefit. This, this 5.3 million is composed of three categories, disability benefit, those on universal credit who are on some sort of illness, and, uh, and, and JSA in the same category. So it's three categories into one. But disability benefit, one million in the 80s, the projections um, to the in, in just in, in in a few years, we're expecting you know sort of seven million people, not five point three million people. And there, there has been a COVID factor, but I think there is also a general sort of post-industrial policy factor because if you look at Middlesbrough and Hartlepool, uh, Liverpool, you've got you know up to twenty percent of, of adults on out of work benefits and yeah, not yeah. available to work, uh, not fit for work. And I think that's a long term consequence of, of, of closing the factories, you might say, I think that's that's been the thing. And, and that's combined with um, the issue of, well, how do we get labor and the the drug, the thing that the government always leans on immediately is mass mass immigration. And so you've got, we're, we're managing to combine several things which which really shouldn't uh, go together you know as i say five odd million people unable to work uh british citizens and then you've got you know you bring in well over a million people annually now to do yeah. the work and we're just building up problems and there doesn't seem to be enough effort on the part of the government to, to try and train and help these 5.3 million instead it's easier to put them on the scrap heap and just get new arms and legs do you think that's fair i think it's totally fair um, I think that uh, when you look at places, I mean, I always talk about Hartlepool in this in the circumstances, which I mean, mm. no, no, you know, I don't mean no, no insult to no. Hartlepool, but it just the one that keeps mm. cropping up. Um, and the other thing that, 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 you know, I think it does a lot of it goes back to this whole uh, Green Book policies of where you put public investment. And for decades, the Green Book policy on public investment has been you put it in the southeast and london because that's where the wealth is and yes. uh, so i think this idea that yes you know the rest of the country and certainly places like hartlepool have been deliberately as a matter of policy as a mm. matter of policy um you know put put on the scrap heap is 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 mm. clearly you know part of that because when you get into a situation like that when you get disadvantage discrimination 
people learn worthlessness and powerlessness. Mm. And if you're starting mm. from a position of worthlessness and powerlessness, slipping into disability is, uh, it's, it's a very, very easy trip to go. And it's difficult to get out of once it's very starts. difficult to get out of. You, you, you need a, re, a remoralization. There's one other factor as well, which which I'm going to mention mm. because it's it's about to become a hobby horse of mine, mm. um, and that is the impact of menopause on the mm. on, on 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 the female workforce. Mm. Um, I, I think that it's a, a massive problem. Uh, I think it causes great misery for half the population, or possibly more than half the population. More than I half, think, Michael. And I think it's avoidable and treatable and mm. should uh, should be done. I think, you know, if you look at what's happened to supply, for example, of HRT drugs over the last few years, mm. it's become sporadic, you know? mm. <laughs> as, as if it doesn't matter. And if mm. it doesn't matter, then guess what? You know, more um, uh, later aged women are, are, are going to be suffering. No, it'll be, it's worth looking at actually as a priority uh, for policy. One thing before we finish, I, I, I should ask you about is a, a point you made, I think, at the start of the year, which is the discrepancy between the labour market survey and the household survey in terms of how many people are employed. And that gave, I mean, the household survey um, does, yeah, the labour market survey has a higher, number, much higher number than the, 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 the household survey. So what's going on there? Do you think there are just more people in the country than the government realise? Well, I think we're about to find out, aren't we? I mean, we've got the yes. ONS is just changing its uh, its technique for figuring out how many people are arriving in the country, and it's clearly massively more than than mm. they previously thought, by hundreds of mm. thousands, and therefore mm. over the years by millions. So I, I, I can't mm. imagine what Britain's... I don't know what Britain's population is, and mm. I don't think the government does. I think maybe the supermarkets do. I think they're probably the only people who actually have a good idea. Well, that's probably the, yes, that's probably a far, far better metric. Anyway, I want to give three cheers for uh, Fraser Nelson and the uh, team at The Spectator, who are the only people, that, apart from us, actually, that are highlighting this problem of, yeah. of just millions of our fellow citizens um, out, left to, to on the scrap heap outside the labour market long term. And it can't last. They, we've got to address this and, and deal with it somehow. And just importing millions and millions of people in, you're just storing problems for the future. And, th and as I say, that projection on that figure is going to go up. So it's not going away, it's getting worse. I think it's, it's absolutely, yeah, a, 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 absolutely right. I mean, w w we know why the Treasury wants loads of people in. It's because they are running a Ponzi scheme on, on national insurance and on tax. Yes. That's yeah, the only exactly. reason. Um, exactly. And actually, you know, having, having reduced large parts of the country to the scrap heap, which now need subsidizing, they don't know what to do. Of course, what you've got to do is you've got to remoralize, reinvest, and get those people back to living good, healthy, productive lives. We'd and open, all be better open, for the, it. Open, open the manufacturing, open the factories again. Uh, Absolutely. You won't do it overnight, but you've got to want to do it. Listen, thanks very much, Michael. Take care. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.